Hello, this is an assessment for restoration of a Beckstein Model A grand piano. It's about six foot three inches long. So it's in our storage area and we're trying to decide what's the best thing to do with the piano to improve it. We can see I'm just zeroing on this key front, which uh, they often fall down inside. And in fact, I did find this one inside. So that will probably stick straight back on so it doesn't get lost. Um, looking at the key tops otherwise, they're in quite a good condition. They look as though they've not been taken off and put back on. There's no strong line between the front and the back. There's a little crack there, which often you get. Um, probably not worth replacing the key top for that because it won't match so well. There's one that's been replaced, I think, here. As you can see, it's not quite a perfect match. And the case works generally not in bad condition at all for the age of the piano, 1909 roughly. So. The pedals are very low, by the way. We've talked about that on back times before, and there's plenty of legroom, 62 centimetres and five centimetres from the floor of the pedals. That's excellent, especially if you want to raise it up. To, if you're very tall, it's already reasonably good legroom. So that's an ideal piano for a tall person. Looking through round here, there's a bit missing there, so uh, that could be made good. Obviously, if we're repolishing the whole piano, then that would be perfect. But we won't make that. Probably won't get that quite perfect. There's a little bit of crazing here. Um, if it was a stock piano, I think we'd just tidy up the case and sell it less expensively um, because the case is quite good and it looks like French polish to me. The long side is also very good. A little bit of uh, slight crazing there, but nothing like you do get on Becksteins of this age and the very old Becksteins have crazed tremendously very often. So there's a bit of scratching here. Obviously, it could be repolished. Um, as I say, if it was a stock piano, we wouldn't do that. We'd try and we like look, look look for pianos that aren't going to be quite so expensive. So this would suit most people, I think. And the fall also is in reasonable condition, and the top of the fall as well. Uh, there's a scratch here, so won't be able to get rid of those completely unless we just redo the whole piano. Now the music stand. Uh, has got a bit broken on it. In fact, most of it's broken, as you can see. It's just holding up by the skin of its teeth, as it were. Just a small bit at the back to just show you what's holding it up. Just that little bit. They quite often do break on Becksteins, unfortunately. Uh, but we're always repairing them. It's not a problem. Well, the major problem on this piano is loose tuning pins. They're very, very loose, and some of them down here, as we're here if we play the piano. Let's try down the bass end. <laughs> So that tuning pin just isn't holding, it's turning round. Uh, they're original pins, they can tell that because they're very small, the lever's moving a lot on that. So uh, they may be well, one or two that have been changed, but I think mostly they're original. When, they, when you change a bass string, you should change the tuning pin too. So, But they're still very small. Uh, so let's have a look at the rest of them. So really, uh, this, this pin won't hold, so if we turn it up, for instance, Try and, try and turn it upwards and it just goes well it doesn't quite go straight back down but almost so that's so really they all need replacing at the very least now if we're going to fully restore obviously replace the rest plank under here but it's uh, the original pins so there's you could put several sizes up without a problem uh, depends if we do a full restoration we still replace the rest plank anyway that's the Model A. Look, look out for cracks on the frame here, and there aren't any. That's something we always look for on Model A's, probably, I don't know, one in two. Perhaps of this age, not quite so many. Um, 1902 is when they started, and I think some of the early ones had crack frames, and I think some of the later ones do as well. They're both sides of here, the frame cracks just there. If you look up Beckstein crack frame on the internet with an image, you'll find plenty of examples of that. Now, frames on Becksteins go very mottled uh, for some reason. They always tend to go like this, or well, nearly always, um, so don't look so so good, really. So, obviously, if we're restringing, which I think we would recommend, because if the tuning pins are loose, you're going to change, the, take the strings off. You might as well change them, and uh, then we'll restring the piano and uh, obviously redo the frame. Uh, recondition the soundboard. It looks as though it's had a shim put in there before. Um, that used to be a crack. There's a crack going across there. Again, it looks as though it's got a shim in it. Uh, interesting, because it looks to me that's probably not right. I'm not quite sure why those look as though they've been shimmed. And yet the strings are all original. 
There are some bad mismatches on the strings, actually. If you look along the line of bass strings, you can see there's a variety um, of different types. So that's that's not that's not got any um, double, double winding on it. This like these have where you can see the white top winding and the bottom winding, and that's that's just a single one. So there's some mismatching going on there. Almost impossible to read the serial number there, which is so common on Becksteins. But you will find large numbers underneath. This isn't the proper serial number. We've got a calculator. It's roughly 2.5, multiplied by about 2.5, but that's not that accurate. We've got a, a list of uh, serial numbers and, and the numbers underneath. Uh, not comprehensive, but it's helping us to get an idea. 35038. They're always quite big on here, which is helpful. While we're under here, it's in generally good condition. Someone's got some some grease or tallow or something on to stop the pedal squeaking. Uh, but generally speaking, um, I didn't mention the pitch is 428, which is incredibly low. It's almost about a quarter of a tone low. Now looking inside, there's a missing key front and it's 85 keys. Beckstein Model A is 85, not 88. That's the this age of Beckstein Model A. Now, as we've mentioned many times, the main wearing point is the hammer, obviously. And then we're going to change shanks and rollers if we would do it. So the, there's, they are loose. So I'm wiggling this and the hinges are loose. Once they get loose, the hammers wear much faster. And you can hear often a click when, they're, when these hinges are loose. They're, they're varying. So that's another loose one. So in the middle, they're tending to be a bit loose. And the rollers are just becoming a bit worn. So we would change hammers, shanks and rollers if we're changing hammers. If we're going to keep these hammers, then we would just reface them and uh, perhaps just replace the pins with slightly larger ones. It doesn't give you quite such an even touch if you do that and, uh, from, compared to replacing the whole thing. So that's why we're always doing that. Some of these jacks are very tight, so they need lubricating. Lubricating is not too bad, really. That's 52 grams going down there, should be 50 but 52 is certainly reasonably acceptable. And there's another one that's 52 again. And uh, generally, I think the sharps too, they're not too bad. So 52, uh, if we lubricate, then that will probably bring it down to about 50. So there's the assessment sheet. I'd run out of grand piano ones. Sorry about that. Um, but it's roughly the same as an upright. See a few things different on it. Um, the serial number is not the proper serial number that's underneath and uh, we talked about that elsewhere so just carry on quickly here the main work is restringing uh, refinish the soundboard and frame lubrication and replace the key front which I've already done and the key weighting isn't too bad if we change hammer shanks and rollers then we'd have to redo the key weighting as well but I think with lubrication that will probably come down to 50 grams and that's what it should be in the middle and we'll check the key weighting throughout as well I should have mentioned the broken support on the music stand, which is obviously something we, we will do. So that's an assessment of a Beckstein model A grand piano, made in about 1909. And uh, the obvious work to do here is to restring the piano, um, recondition the soundboard, and also refinish the frame. The actual work, if it we're fully restoring the piano, we would do that. This is interesting because the casework is in very good condition generally. Not perfect, but not uh, not something that our clients who are just wanting a musician's piano wouldn't accept. So if this was a stock piano, that's what I think we would probably just unusually restring the piano, uh, redo the soundboard and the frame, and then um, see if there's any down bearing that can be improved. Listening to it there, it's about what you'd expect for a Model A kind of tone. flat it's probably not been tuned for let's say hardly at all in its life to being that flat quarter of a tone is very very flat um, it doesn't hurt a piano not to be tuned but what hurts it is the fact that the tune is not, not making sure it doesn't dry out and this is clearly dried out and that's why it's tuning pins have gone loose and the drying out has encouraged it to go flat as well so um, I'm not really going to play it much because some of the notes are so out of tune and others are not bad as you can hear there. I think it was restrung with the first thing to do, uh, the most important thing. And then because you're restringing, you do the frame and the, the frame really would, could do with it looking much better. And also the soundboard, which is 
perfectly all right in a way. It's just that we, if we recondition, uh, if we do the string, sorry, we do the soundboard and the frame automatically because you've got the strings off. Um, and then whether you change the hammers or not, the hammer hinges are a bit loose, so I would in be inclined to change hammer shanks and rollers, but it's not, it's not absolutely essential work. then please do write to us info at robertpianos.com and we can assess it in transit if you're moving from A to B or, or just try and improve the touch on it for you uh, which is the main thing that most musicians want and if, in this case it needs restringing as well because of the loose tuning pins.